Uh, it's called the Bob McCallum Podcast for reasons that are kind of inexplicable, and uh, I'm that guy. And uh, John Shannon is there at the bottom of the screen if you're watching on uh, YouTube. Uh, if you're listening, um, you'll just have to hear his voice. And Maybe we should change today, the name of the show. I didn't create the name of the show. The show was called Something Different, as you well know, and then it got changed. And so for reasons that are inexplicable, it just wound up being this. And well, we're going to go with it for the time. We might have to have a meeting about that. Yeah, good. Another meeting. That's just what we need. Uh, with the commissioner of the National Hockey League, Gary Bettman is with us. Long time no see. How you been? I, I've been good under the circumstances. Uh, yeah. How about you guys? Well, we're all right. You know, we're up here in Canada where it's a lot safer than it is yeah. down there in the United States of America. But And you know, I noticed, which is why both of our oh, hubs, yeah. our bubbles are in Canada. You know, well, so and let, that, let me that wasn't right lost there. on me. Let me go right there because um, uh, I don't, you know, you know, I don't do this often, but you guys need to be congratulated because the plan that you guys put together um, <laughs> is clearly the best <laughs> of any sports league. Oh, quit, quit smiling, Batman. You know, I, I, you <laughs> this, this is this. a new experience. <laughs> let me let me enjoy it for thirty seconds. You don't oh, even need the heart. You don't even need the heart paddles, Gary. I mean, that's good. I mean, my goodness gracious, boy! No, just trying Somebody's to be mellow. I, no, <laughs> just wait, Batman. Just wait. <laughs> I'm just trying being COVID friendly here. Um, but look, at you guys did made the right decisions, and I'm sure it wasn't easy. Um, tell me about the process. You probably went through like. Uh, 50, 100 different possibilities? We, we uh, from, from the minute, uh, actually before, as it was clear the pause was coming in mid-March, uh, I was focused on how do we complete the 1920 season? How do we keep everybody safe and healthy, which was the most important issue uh, that we would confront no matter what we were doing? And how did we have the opportunity to put ourselves in a position where we, if we were flexible, we could have the most number of options. Uh, so the first thing, and, and the Players Association, Don Fear and I uh, were consulting regularly from the outset. Uh, I'd say during the last 140 plus days, uh, we must have spoken at least once, if not multiple times a day. And so what we needed to do was first craft a return to play structure and plan for the right time. And the committee, including players, was set up on that. We focused on the critical date calendar. We focused on the protocols. We focused on an extension to the collective bargaining agreement to deal with, with what we were gonna be going through from all aspects. And it was a collaborative effort. And when we ultimately were putting the pieces together, and I know there was a lot of commentary on this. Why didn't we announce where we were going? You know, this city was the favorite. That city was the favorite. Uh, Ten of our clubs, including the cities in which they play, all made compelling presentations. But watching what was going on around us and learning more about uh, medicine and COVID-19 and face masks and social distancing than I ever imagined I'd need to know, uh, I decided we needed to wait to the very last second so we could see where the safest places to be were. And so that was an important decision, maybe one of the most important, but it was part of a bundle of things that we were multitasking on. One, one of the key things in all of this, Gary, is that it really appears, uh, and you've talked about it for years, the partnership is the, between the players uh, and the owners. Uh, it, it seems to have manifested itself in such a manner this time uh, for the benefit of everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we look at other leagues, and I don't expect you to comment about other leagues, mm -hmm. but when you look at other leagues and you look at the cooperation between the NHLPA and the National Hockey League, it's, uh, it's quite uh, a revelation, really, isn't it? Well, it, it's not often that people have ever said that about our relationship. Well, let's not be unmindful of our history. But our history was there were always reasons for what we were going through, uh, including 0405. But it gave us a system which, for the long term health of the game, uh, on and off the ice, you look at our extraordinary competitive balance that comes out of the system that came out of 0405. But, you know, Don Fear and I have been at this not just 
together, which we've been at since, you know, the last seven years, six years. But when you look at, you know, we've both been in professional sports a long time on opposite sides of the table. And I think there's a, a professionalism that we each respect in the other. Uh, and I think that the environment that not just the hockey world, but the world at large is living in um, brought us together. Uh, and, and I think under the circumstances, the level of collaboration and cooperation uh, was outstanding because it got us to the place where we're actually playing games. I mean, yesterday at four o'clock, I know this is taking us off track, for the first time in, in, since March 12th, I had a smile on my face. I was almost giddy. I was watching live hockey and, and it was sensational. And that's what it was all about. But again, we all understood from the beginning, players, owners, league, we, we knew we were dealing with something that was unprecedented. And no matter what we were doing, health and safety had to be the number one priority on our focus. Now, health and safety on the game side, on the business side, you're, the finishing the CBA has, and redoing the CBA has been a, a huge factor. Are you confident that for the next six years, uh, the business structure of the league is solid? Yeah, but our franchises have never been stronger. Our players have never made more. But at the end of the day, you know, our industry, uh, once March 12th came around, basically in terms of revenues coming in, was shut down. Uh, I'm optimistic that uh, once we finish 1920, we can focus on 2021 and play a full season. And we're going to be anxious, able, and willing to get back to business as normal as soon as possible. But until that happens, we've got to do the things, be flexible, be creative, have optionality to be able to move everything forward. And again, health and safety of the players, health and safety of the personnel that it requires to put on our games, and the health and safety of the communities in which we play. With the commissioner of the NHL, uh, Gary Bettman, uh, I'm intrigued by your relationship with Don Fear. Um, I would have thought it would be far more confrontational than it appears it has been. Well, how would you yeah, define it? Well, I'm sure it does. But how would you define your relationship with Don? Are, are you I th friends? I think, are you friendly? Yes, very friendly. Oh, listen, you, you don't talk to somebody as often as we were talking to each other. Uh, and not be friendly and cordial. I, you know what? I think on a personal level, we like each other. Uh, we respect each other. I think Don's been quoted as saying, if we grew up on the opposite sides of the table in the business, we could each do the same job that the other's doing because we understand each other. Uh, and I think that, that on both sides, we understood the need for the good of everybody and the good of the game and ultimately in as important, if not more so than anyone else, the good of our fans, we had to figure this out and do something that was good for everybody. And I think that's what brought us together. But I, you know, I have res the utmost respect for Don. I think he does for me. Uh, let's not leave Matthew Schneider out of the mix, who was an important element, as, as was Bob, uh, Bill Daly. Bob, who, uh, who, as you know, is an extraordinary talent and, and somebody who I rely on quite heavily. Well, we know that. Um, are you, were you surprised at how expedient the conversation was? How quickly you were able to consummate this CBA extension? Well, you know, it, that, that's a great question. Um, I'm not sure at the time as we were going through it, it felt quick. And the fact that we were doing this virtually, you know, it's one thing, when you're in a room with somebody and they go into another room and caucus, but they're in the same facility and you come back and you knock on the door and you go back and forth. You know, sometimes it's too easy to get off the phone or to get off the Zoom. Uh, and so doing this negotiation uh, virtually was, was a novelty and a challenge. This was an important effort. Uh, the issues were profound and you know, I think we've all learned to adjust to the technology since we've had to, and thank goodness the technology exists. But 
you know, we, we needed every moment of every day, but, but our respective colleagues were able to, particularly in terms of crafting the documents and dealing with the myriad of issues, uh, it was a, a, a completely collaborative effort. Um, I don't know that it could have gone any faster. Uh, you know, like a turtle, a negotiation fills up the, the environment that it's in. Turtle continues to grow as big as the bowl and you take as much time in the negotiation as you have. But I think, again, everybody recognized, we, you know, listen, we didn't agree on everything, but conceptually we were on the same page as to what needed to be accomplished. And that may have been the most important element of this. Without COVID, would you have a new deal? Well, you know, we were working on a new deal last summer uh, when we both agreed not to exercise the reopener, which we right. both could have done in September for next September. Uh, next September being right around the corner now. It's amazing how time has flown during this. Uh, and we were working on that. And after we each didn't reopen, things slowed down a little. But we had been focused on an extension of the CBA because labor peace is important vitally important, particularly at a time like this when there are enough distractions going on in the world. I think, you know, particularly our fans were looking for us to do the right thing for them, our fans, for the game, for the players, for the teams. And, and I think we recognized, Don and I did, that we had a responsibility to try and do the right things here. You will embark now on a... Um on what you've created as a, a, a remainder of the 1920 season um, in a time frame that um, hockey has not experienced. Uh, you are, um, you know, we've seen Stanley Cup playoffs go into June, but not July, not August, not September, not up against baseball and the start of the NFL, which we assume is coming in. College football is, I don't have to tell you, is a big thing in the United States. As you went through this process, how aware were you of, of that? And what do you think, Gary, is going to be the audience's reaction when, you know, you're going to have all kinds of things to watch simultaneously all of a sudden? Well, you know, we, even when we play the Stanley Cup final, uh, we're up against, ba normally, we're up against yeah. baseball, we're up against the NBA championship. Yeah. Uh, so, you know... Hockey fans will find us. Uh, it's clear from all the data I'm seeing that people are missing sports, particularly at a point in time when the world is being challenged and life isn't normal. People come together around sports. It's an emotional connection. It's a unifying force, particularly in difficult and challenging times. So I think there's gonna be an appetite for all of us. Uh, my focus was, from a timing standpoint, uh, when we talk about health and safety, and I know that I keep hammering that, there was also a second element that we were focused on. Yes, we had to be very careful in terms of the protocols for COVID-19, but we also were looking at a situation where most of our players hadn't skated and wouldn't be skating for a period of time longer than it had ever been since they were three years old. And we didn't want the players risking their careers and getting injured by not being in game shape. So what we did, we weren't focused on the other sports. We were focused on us. Okay, when it was safe to reopen our facilities for individual and small group training with the appropriate protocol, phase two. Phase three, training camps, testing at least every other day, trying to get everybody back and get every, make sure that everybody's healthy, which our goal was hopefully by the time we got to phase four playing and everybody was in the bubble that we would have screened out to COVID-19. Appears to be the case and I'm hoping it stays that way. Um, and so the timetable was dictated by the needs of the game and in particular the needs of the players because I wanted to make sure that they were comfortable, that they had enough time to be in game ready shape. When he came to training camp, when we had the return to play committee with the players, we repeatedly said, tell us how long you want. We're not putting you on a timetable. You're gonna tell us what you need. 
One of the things, Gary, that uh, through all of this is that everybody's still wondering, and as you said, we hope and fingers crossed that the bubbles live and everything is fine. Um, you're you're a man that always thinks about five plays ahead of anything else that happens. So what happens when a team gets four or five COVID tests positive? Well, hopefully that doesn't happen. And actually, I've seen a couple of players quoted as saying being in the bubble is the safest they've felt since not just us, but COVID-19 started. Um, and, and the bubbles are very strict. I know you must, and, and your viewers and listeners must be seeing the media reports. Uh, I think our Steve Mayer and our events group has done an extraordinary job in a very short period of time of setting up the bubble. The answer to your question is the medical people are going to tell us what we need to be doing. Okay, well, ultimately I have to make the decision that's within my authority we're going to be guided by our medical people and the local medical people at the governmental level who are going to tell us what we have to do. You know, the protocols we used were signed off by the health authorities at all levels, as they had to be, and we're going to be guided by what the medical experts tell us. I'm not a doctor. I don't want to be a doctor. Uh, you know, I, sciences were not my thing, and I've learned more about medicine and science in the last 100 plus days than I ever imagined I would. But we're going to take all of our guidance on those types of decisions, which hopefully we never get to that point from the medical experts. I'd be remiss, Gary, if I didn't ask you about the um, situation that developed just over the last few days, that with the Miami Marlins in baseball. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what your thoughts on that are, and is there anything you, you guys can learn from that? Well, the, the, I don't, as John mentioned earlier, I don't like commenting <laughs> on other sports, uh, but, you know, Florida, and I was down there for the first, I went down to Florida uh, to spend a few days with my, three days with my wife in March and came back a hundred days later. Um, but the fact of the matter is Florida and a number of places in the United States have had uh, severe outbreaks uh, and I guess the only lesson you can learn is you got to be careful and you can't take anything for COVID-19 for granted. How baseball's doing it and what their protocols are and their decisions, I'm not touching. But for us, my belief was from early on was, and you know, and, and, and the record is replete with this because my initial view in March was we're going to go to some remote places like the university of Notre Dame or University of Vermont or University of North Dakota and play there. And then it was clear based on the needs that we would have in terms of facilities and everything and the number of teams and hotels and everything else, we had to play in one of our buildings. Uh, but our view from the outset was we had to find a safe environment for us to finish the season if we were gonna be able to do it. So that was our decision making. I don't know, I'm not privy enough to what the other sports are doing to tell you why or how their decisions are being made. I only can focus on what I think was appropriate for us. On, the, uh, on your critical dates calendar, you say December 1st uh, for uh, 2021 to start. Yep. I assume that's in light pencil? Yeah. Yeah, like everything, <laughs> right? Tell, tell me what the world's going to be like in two weeks. Um, but, th but that's part, but again, you know, there, there was all the speculation that we were going to this city or that city and we held and held and waited until we had the most information available. And I think in terms of Edmonton and Toronto, and I have to thank the Leafs and the Oilers organizations for opening their homes for us and being extraordinarily helpful and cooperative, but ultimately when we start the 2021 season, which we will do and we will play a full season, but at the end of the day, the exact timing will let the circumstances as they unfold dictate that for us. I know, you know, if, if, if you're in the hard news business, some of these answers are kind of wishy-washy, but the answer is, I'm not drawing hard lines in the sand. I want to make sure that we can be flexible and adaptable and do the right things. Gary, we're not in the hard news business, we're in hockey and sports. I mean, we're here to, you know, that's, uh, that's business worry. So, um, and I've asked you this before, 
when you do open the season, do you expect fans to be in the seats? I hope so. I mean, that's again, like your other question, that's not our call, right? Yeah. That's going to be up to the, the, the local authorities, maybe the federal authorities or the provincial authorities telling us what is acceptable and what is doable, right? I mean, you know, listen, as of today, we don't have permission for owners to come and watch their teams play, even if they're outside the bubble. Bill Daly and I haven't figured out how we're getting in yet because of the 14-day quarantine in Canada. So there are lots of issues that are still resolved. But again, my presence wasn't as important as the players and the medical people and our staff and the third-party vendors that we needed to help us put things on. So we deal with this one step at a time. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, if, if, we're, if it's open for business in terms of fans and stands, great. If we're given some limitations, hopefully that won't be the case. But if it is, we'll deal with that. But wow. all, we can do, all we can do is react, plan for all contingencies, and then use the right reaction for what presents itself. Well, clearly, um, you, 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 as you said, it's in light pencil. Um, and, and one of the things you have to contemplate is if you start a new season in December, are, are you likely to be in a situation where not dissimilar to what you have right now with Toronto and Edmonton, where you have maybe four places and guys and they're back in isolation again for some period of time? It's got to be on your mind. Everything is we got to this point because we ran lots of scenarios uh, where, you know, as I said, I'm actually enjoying watching hockey uh, as we're speaking today at noon, six games will unfold and I couldn't be more thrilled. We, we're, we're, we will be modeling as we have uh, every possible scenario we can come up with so we can be flexible enough to react to whatever we're prevent, presented with. Can I ask you um, the process of determining who continues to play, what kind of format? It's not, you're not, you're, you're not really, well, in any way, continuing the abandoned part of the season. Um, it's almost like a new thing altogether. Um, how many hundreds of variations did you go through before you came up with this? There were no shortage of opinions. No, um, actually, we, we do think, you know, we were 89% done with the regular season, uh, 180 games left when, when we took the pause. Um, and, you know, because our competitive balance is as extraordinary as it is, there were a lot of teams that if you cut off the standings on that day that had played fewer games, some had played more games, and the likelihood was some number of the teams on the outside looking in actually would have made it in. And that was where the play-in round came from. How we did it, what the format was, I, again, we modeled it out. Bill Daly and I actually modeled out this scenario, the one we are ultimately using, and the, the Players, Players Association had a sign off on it, our clubs had a sign off on it. I think either the first or second Sunday after we took the pause, in the afternoon, he and I sat down for an hour and modeled this out. And mm. this was our initial reaction as to what we thought we should do. But we considered tons of others. Uh, but this, this is the one that I think was the fairest and would ensure not only the integrity of the playoffs, but whoever is the Stanley Cup champion uh, will have certainly deserved it after this run that you have to go to, particularly having been in isolation. For, for the Stanley Cup champion, they will have been in isolation for more than two months. Uh, that is extraordinary, and I think our athletes are great, not just what they do on the ice, but how they conduct themselves and how they feel about the game. Because, you know, interestingly, to try and cut down the length of time away from home, we had a discussion about best of five, not just for the play-in round, but for the first and second round of the play playoffs. And the players are the ones who said, no, leave it best of seven. Whoever wins the Cups got to do it the right way. 
the the only the, the one concern uh, you might have is about i got lots uh, of concerns I, not to I, worry i know i know i know <laughs> I, I, I know as soon as i said it i knew that <laughs> um is that those te those two teams that go to the stanley cup final boy oh boy they they might have they might have a little cabin fever by, by the time this is over oh although you know what the, the, there's no travel we're playing a regular schedule um, you know, we're not taking lots of time off in between rounds or in between games. Uh, there's a lot in the bubble. And my, I, you know, listen, there are teams, as you know, that, that wind up in hotels when they're home, not just on the road by the time they get to the conference finals and finals. Um, you know, at that point in the season, my guess is, not more than a guess. The focus by the players and the organizations is so intense that that you know they're not worrying about other things. They're focused on winning the cup. How I, realistic is it to have families there for the third round? Uh, it would be, it would be great, and if we can, we will. But again, I don't think that's going to be our call. Well, how would you categorize your relationship with the corporate sponsors? I mean, I'm uh, sure this our, is our sponsors have been outstanding. Uh, we've got, listen, we, we've gotten very supportive feedback uh, from our business partners, whether it's media partners uh, or corporate sponsors, particularly with the way we've gone about this and the, the way we've transacted uh, business with, first and foremost, the players. Uh, the fact that we could agree on an extension and everybody is looking not just getting past COVID-19, but six years of labor peace. Um, we've, we've had great support and we're grateful for it. But, hey, Bob, uh, hey Bob, Bob, you got one arena that's got one, one of the number one corporate partner's names on it. And you got another arena with the other corporate partner's name on it. They gotta be pretty damn happy. Well, I, I, listen, I think everybody who's associated with the game at any level uh, is thrilled that we're back. Uh, and, and that was always the goal because we believed that it was important, in, in, particularly in a time like this, that we do the best we could to reconnect the hockey world with the rest of the world, particularly, our, obviously, our fans. Well, um, Batman, if you get locked out of Canada or you and Daly uh, decide not to come up here. Do you want to present the Stanley Cup, Bob? I'm just we're, trying to do my corporate just, best just to help it. my friend Batman uh, out here. I'm offering to present the cup if he uh, needs it. By the way, the, um, my, my, my suggestion that we're having trouble getting in is a short-term issue, logistically. <laughs> we, we, we will be there, um, and, and the... the the greatest honor there is presenting the greatest trophy in sports. I'm planning on being there. Not I can't. Sure. I, I can't believe you offered. I, I can't can. believe. I'm you with you. How long have you known him? Of course, you know we would offer. I've actually. Well, I've know. known him longer than I've known you. So holy wow. smokes! <laughs> well, I got a few political connections here. You know, <laughs> if you don't nice to me, you two, I can keep. I can keep <laughs> Edmund and Daly out of Canada, probably. Oh my god! I, I think gracious. we'll be fine. I, again, I think you'll be okay. we, we didn't focus on ourselves as a priority. There are other things that we wanted to make sure we were taken care of. And, uh, you know, based on the, the needs and demands on our time, we're both where we need to be I right hear now. Well, um, you've done a terrific job. I, I, I said that off Thank the top, you. and it's only appropriate that I say that at the, uh, at the end of this. Um, no league has done a better job. I, I, I'm not going to categorize who's better and who's worse, but... You guys have done a terrific job in putting the, the pieces to this together. And um, in just a short period of time, you're going to see the fruits of your labor um, um, become exposed to everybody. We've seen a few, a few exhibition games now, but all of a sudden this thing is going to start for real. And um, we'll keep our fingers crossed, not, not just John and I, but all of the hockey fans that, that it works out well. And uh, Nice job, Batman. Congratulations. Thank you. And as always, it's great to be with you. So you guys be safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you soon. Uh, we'll Here. look forward to that. Thank, Thank you, you, Gary. All you the best. Will. That's it for us. We'll see you next time on the podcast. Bye-bye.